Welcome. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoy today's service. We are encouraged and blessed, honestly, to be able to express ourselves for Christ uh, in a free nation. Uh, and we want to continue to lift up his name during the time that we're about to share in together. If you're joining us online, welcome today. I hope that you are uh, very encouraged and you leave understanding more of God's mission for you and uh, what Christ would want to do in the way of starting a relationship with you if you haven't yet invited him into your life. Uh, but I am excited today because we'll be looking at uh, what it means uh, concerning the spiritual warfare battle that we're all involved in, especially as Christians. We need to remember that um, it's not a joke, it's real. Uh, and we need to go after a relationship with God above everything else. And that's the way to having a victory. But thank you if you're joining us online or you're here in the parking lot. Uh, what a blessing to be able to have you here today. And let's uh, remember also 89.1. Uh, if you're still in your car, most of you I know are outdoors enjoying the weather, uh, even with the heat. We want to make sure you know there are water bottles for you uh, in that cooler there in the back of the parking lot. We want to make sure everyone stays cool. Uh, so that is available for you. Um, and uh, we are just again thankful that you are here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask again, God, uh, understanding that, Lord, the world is your parish. That is, uh, Lord, uh, what uh, is most important. And that we need to remember that, God, uh, we are not confined to the four walls of a building. But we are the church. And wherever we go as a group of people, wherever we worship together, Lord, we do so representing Jesus' name. And Lord, I think about the early church, and they were not to forsake the assembling of themselves together. Uh, Lord, that's what we're doing this morning. For some, that means they're worshiping from their house. But nonetheless, I pray that more and more people will come together during this time, either in the parking lot, indoors, wherever they're at. And we do this, Lord, as ones who are, are deciding uh, intentionally to put off fear and instead to put on faith. And Father, that's what I pray will also come from this. As we talk about the real spiritual battle that we're in, that we'll remember that, Lord, if we're trying to, to seek your glory through watching the TV news, which I'm not saying anything against the news per se, but I do want to say that above all, that, Lord, if we're not clothed in your righteousness and with your faith through us, that, Lord, we're going to let fear overcome us. And we're going to be afraid to leave our homes. We're going to be afraid to get out and uh, minister to other people. And I pray that God no longer will fear rain. And we're going to put on the clothing that results in a spirit of faith. Help us to be those kinds of people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day. Amen. This is the day. Morning, family. Morning. And as Pastor has said, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Once more. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice i will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it for this is the day that the lord has made i will rejoice and be glad in it oh this is the day this is the day that the lord has made
Wonderful job, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate that, brother. Wonderful job. Uh, and as we continue in this time together, I want to just bring up uh, a few things today uh, in the way of announcements. Uh, this uh, Wednesday, men, we'll have our men's group study uh, here at the church at 6 o'clock. Don't forget that. Um, it's very important, especially during these times, that we come together as men uh, unashamed, unafraid, willing uh, to sort of... Uh, Put each other to the test so to speak we need that time of accountability that comes when men come together as one uh, so uh, looking forward to our uh, men's group study i want to say thank you to all the women uh, and your help yesterday for for what i understand was a great baby shower uh, for julie may thank you for doing that uh, what a blessing that is and in the way of another announcement i do want to bring up we are tentatively planning on um having uh, a church picnic on September 27th at Norton Park, Columbia Woods Park, okay? So you can sort of etch that in if you want and pencil in your brain. Uh, September 27th, we are planning on a church picnic uh, at Columbia Woods Park in Norton. So uh, definitely looking forward uh, to uh, that time. Um, but uh, also, um, if you'd like to help us with engaging the kids with the message of Christ in some creative way, you know, we have some people doing that, but we need more. Um, looking forward to that. If you would like to help us with that, please let us know. I've appreciated the job that um, we have some of our volunteers and what they're doing. And I want you to know you don't have to be here um, if you have concerns uh, from the coronavirus or whatever. You can still put a video out there. Um, and we can use that to help our kids. How important it is, we cannot forget our kids during this time. Uh, also, I, I do want to make the announcement, we're looking forward to, Lord willing, uh, starting Children's Church again in August uh, when the kids go back to school. Uh, so uh, definitely remember our kiddos as they prepare to be in school and some may do e-learning. I uh, praise God uh, for our kids and our teachers and our staff as they prepare for in-school sessions. Uh, we want to pray for everyone's safety through that and whatever anyone chooses, uh, but ultimately that uh, everyone will be kept safe. So uh, definitely looking forward uh, to that. Let's continue remembering our kids and our teachers and our staff. Well, you know, I don't know why you're here. I hope it's not just so everyone sees you and you feel like, you know, hey, you're doing the right thing out of duty. I hope it's because you love Jesus and you're unashamed to worship together and you take seriously what the Bible says when it says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. That goes for all times. And so I appreciate those of you, again, who are joining us online, but also those of you who are sitting out there or in your car. Uh, we're glad you're here, but we're here to worship God. Right, Scott? Amen. Amen. Thank you. I will worship my God. Stand in the light with a face. 
faithful forgiver, sing of his unending love. And I will worship my God. And I will worship my God. He is my rock. He is my strength. And while I have life, I will worship my God Then I will abide in His temple forever Sing of His power and glory Stand in the light, the faithful forgiver Sing of His unending love And I will worship my God my God while I have life while I have breath while I have life I will worship my God Adjust my clips here so the wind doesn't blow my pages around. There we go. Okay, we're getting ready to start with prayer. And prayer is uh, really probably one of the most important parts of being a Christian, with the exception of reading God's Word. And uh, that's a, a time when you just come to, to Christ and you surrender everything. You give Him all these worldly things and all your troubles and all your cares and, and just move on and this next song is I Surrender All Amen. 
Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much for that song, which I believe is sensitive to the reason why we come to him in prayer today, and that is to surrender more over to him. In fact, I am convinced, I know that the key to a spiritual life that is on fire and victorious for Jesus Christ, it will be described as one that is willing to give even more of itself, him or herself, over to Jesus. That's the way to success in the view of spiritual life. If we want to be on fire for Christ, if we want to be seen as those who point others to Him, if we want to live a victorious Christian life, it comes through obedience. And obedience comes as you surrender more of your life over to Christ Jesus. And let's pray. Father, I thank You, Lord, again, for the time that we can come together. In fact, Lord, uh, you know, I'm just going to get right at it. I believe, Lord, that what is going on right now uh, this uh, corona stuff and, uh, Lord, uh, the, the hatred that seems to be um, present on some of our streets, Lord, and these different groups which are going around and being divisive. Lord, I pray that you will help us understand that even though, myself included, we can get angry about those things and get angry at those people, that, Lord, that is probably not the proper response and what our response needs to be is a people on our knees in prayer, praying for your help, remembering and reflecting on the fact that these people uh, that are doing these things in the way of causing anger and all of this other stuff going on, that, Lord, it is something taking place and transpiring as a result of the unseen battle going on, that Satan and his demon buddies are around doing what they want trying to cause trouble lord uh, and trying to deceive as many as they can before jesus returns and so lord i want to pray i want to pray for your help i want to pray for your provision and i want to pray that we will remember your grace and as we uh, uh end today's service uh thinking uh, of uh, that amazing grace and as we come together and sing lord i pray that uh lord the devil uh and his demon buddies they're going to get ticked and i believe they will because it's us remembering it's your grace which has allowed for us to be here and celebrate victory through christ the bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins so thank you in that even while we were yet sinners, your son Jesus Christ died for us. Lord, I am here as one who recognizes that I can be angry at a whole bunch of stuff I feel like at times. But I pray what I will be most angry at is sin. And I will not be angry at flesh and blood, but at the unseen powers that are working behind the scenes. That I will remember as one who is not ignorant of that fact that there's a lot going on that we can't see. There's a lot taking place that visibly we are unable to be aware of. But if we have our spiritual minds in full gear, we will recognize very much so that the devil and his demons are working harder than ever to deceive people and cause them to be angry at one another. But help us to remember, we're not going to participate in that. And that, Lord, this morning I pray... The people are going to be taught something even beyond maybe what I planned or prepared for. And that maybe someone will start a new life with Jesus Christ. And I pray that if people, Lord, are tuning in online, that right now they're going to say hello or God bless you or amen online right now. To let us know that they're joining us so that we can be encouraged together. Lord, I am concerned uh, that, Lord, as we go through these hard times... Uh, that many people are forsaking themselves, God, uh, from joining in. Uh, maybe they don't want to be here, but they're not joining in online, and they just feel like they can let certain things go. But I want to speak to that today and say, Lord, I remember what your word says, and I don't want to be described in that way. I want to understand that more than ever, we need each other, wherever we're at, in whatever way, and that we may be physically distanced from each other, but we should never be socially distanced. Lord, I pray for our kids. I pray for the schools as they prepare to open up. And even here in Barberton, as they prepare to have the kids and welcome them back in school. And I pray that they will be safe. 
And I pray, Heavenly Father, that, uh, Lord, ultimately, uh, and I speak from this personally, that if it is your will for more people to wear masks, that we will do that if there's actually something to that in order to keep people safe. But if it's not, if masks aren't enough, Lord, I pray that we'll do something else. And that, Father, whatever it takes, that we will put an end to this coronavirus. I thank you for our president. I thank you for Vice President Pence and their optimism and uh, their working through a vaccine. And I pray that that work will come to a completion sooner than anyone's expected. But ultimately, I know the answer, God, is not any of these things that I've spoken of, except for ultimately you. Our reliance needs to be placed on you. And Lord, I pray that if it means we as a nation need to be on our knees asking for forgiveness, that we're going to be doing that, as Christians especially. Because God, I believe those verses are aimed at believers. That until we repent, God, and we get back with you as we should be, then this nation, this world will never be as it should. Father, I recognize there's a lot of sin going on, and I hate it. And Lord, I hate above all, for me personally, unborn children being massacred. I hate the endorsement of same-sex marriage. I hate God that we're taking away religious rights from people and we act like, well, it's okay. But Lord, I, I pray that whatever sin we're dealing with as individuals, that we're going to offer it up to you and we're going to say, forgive me, Jesus, because I want healing in this nation. I believe the prescription for a cure, Lord, ultimately is us coming before you saying, forgive us as a people. Help us. Heal us. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so as I continue on in today's service, I want to remind you that if you're joining us online or you're here in the parking lot, that you remember this battle we are in is something that has continued to rage on from the beginning of time, or at least until Satan was released to do some of his things here on earth. But ultimately, we have to remember the way to overcome. The way to complete victory is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And that has always been the case and will continue to be that way. And I recognize that we're going through some difficult times right now. But we need to keep a heavenly perspective on what's going on. Not all is what meets the eye, so to speak. In other words, all of us, including myself, need to remember that our anger needs not be directed so much at other people as it does to the evil forces which exist and are working behind the scenes to cause strife, to cause us to be angry at others. And by that I mean in this unseen battle, there are good angels, there is God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. But there are also bad angels and Satan who are working to take us out. So that they can bring as many with them to hell. But thanks be to God that the cure is always Jesus. And that is the way we can continue to understand victory. Further. While our planet's history has witnessed two world wars, the Vietnam and Korean conflicts and the Civil War, plus a whole plethora of others beyond the boundaries of that of our, even our own nation, one thing all of these battles has in common is that each of them had a beginning and each of them had an end. But there is one battle which has not ever ended since it began and that is the spiritual one. From the beginning of time, even when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit that they were not to eat of, and Satan and his involvement with that, until now, and it will continue until the Lord's return, the devil and his allies continue to devour people's lives through deception and in various ways. But through today's message, I want to uh, sort of give a warning here. I'm going to be real, okay? Uh, because I believe that we need to talk very plainly at times about spiritual warfare because it is real, all right? But I want to warn you, if there are any kids watching, um, just be prepared. I'm going to talk about some specific examples 
involving um, demonic presences. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, but it's reality, and we need not be uh, ones who shun back in fear concerning what's going on in this unseen battle. I do not want any of us to forget of whom our true enemy is. And it's not one another. It's not the Democrats against the Republicans, okay, even though we get angry at each other. All right. It's not even the pro-lifers against those who think it's all right to do abortions. All right. It's not any individual mad at somebody else that we should be thinking is okay or be concerned about. We need to remember that Satan is behind what's going on, and he will not have the final victory. That said, let's dig into the Bible to see what it has to say about this issue of spiritual warfare. And we're about to look at this issue in Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to start with verse 10. Paul there writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. And by the way, Oki, am I speaking loud enough? Amen. Okay. I want to make sure I am. All right. Put on the full armor of God, we read there, to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power, but to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle, listen now, whether you're joining us online or here in the parking lot or you're going to see us later on, all right, uh, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So from this passage, I find three things. That's right, I can count. One, two, three. I find a trio of truths that I want to bring to light. But unlike my usual order of thought, which is the way most people probably think about things, I'm going to start this morning with drawing my points, first of all, from the last verse read, and I will circle back up to the beginning of the text. So first I want to talk about this. Our opposition is obvious. Okay, it doesn't take a spiritual rocket scientist to understand if you're a Christian, it's not other people you need to be mad at, it's Satan or one of his demons. Then, our fight is not with our kind. I want to continue with that theme. And finally, remember, his good, that is the good of God, makes evil gone. All right? His good makes evil gone go away. But first then, our opposition is obvious. That serpent who tricked the very first humans has not stopped his slick ways to this day. He has some dominion in the world. I will admit that. Is the devil strong? Sure. But my God is bigger than the boogeyman. I just want to say that again because I like veggie tales. Amen. And I, I thought about singing it to you, but I thought I'd spare you that today. You had enough last week. You were able to hear me do the material girl thing. So I won't be doing that today. Uh, but I do want to remind you that God is greater than Satan. But it seems like so many people, even those who say they're Christians, don't act like they believe that. They'll say they do, but they don't show in their actions that they believe God is actually stronger than Satan. And yes, while the devil wishes to take as many with him as possible to hell, okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, okay, it's hell, it's a place where I believe there is a fiery lake that will burn. I'm not going to paint a pretty picture of it, okay, and I'm not trying to scare folks in here today, but I am trying to be truthful. You don't have to go there. If you know Jesus, you can be with God. You don't have to be with Satan and his angels. But going back then uh, to uh, Satan, know that through various means and measures, the devil has devoted his work and his time here on earth to the destruction of human beings. Why? Because he knows that will make God the Father mad. 
And this has went on since he gave up his place in heaven. If you read in the Bible, a third of the angels followed him. And then in Job chapter 1, we get an idea of Satan's scheme to drive God's upright servant to curse the Almighty. The devil had first went to the Lord. God asked him in that scenario where he had been. And the fallen one responded from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. So from that statement that Satan made, I want us to remember that God's greatest enemy cannot match his ability to be everywhere at the same time. Satan is not everywhere at the same time. We give him way too much credit when we say Satan made me do it. Could I also say that sometimes it's our sinful nature, sometimes it might be one of his demon buddies, but for all I know, Satan might be in the U.S. right now, he might be in Africa, he might be in China, I don't know where he is, but I can tell you that he has many followers doing his bidding. He is not alone in this spiritual battle. So only God can be everywhere at the, same, <clears throat> at the same time. Further, looking at that last statement, that term roaming in verse 7 indicates that Satan cannot be present in all of our problems. But we seem to like to say, well, I'm going through a rough time now, so Satan must be in the middle of it. Or we'll say things again like, the devil made me do it. But ultimately, that is most often untrue. We give that serpent too much satisfaction by saying that. Not to say that Satan cannot be a powerful presence on earth, but in no way is he near as powerful as God. The Almighty's strength is unlimited. Okay, It is infinite. Satan's, on the other hand, is finite. He is limited. He cannot do what only God can do. Yet, the Bible says to us and describes Satan as a roaring lion. In Matthew 17, a boy possessed by an evil spirit is set free after the rebuke of Jesus to the spirit. Then in Mark 1, after a shriek, a bad spirit retreats from a man Jesus frees. In Mark 5, one of the devil's friends claims a name. In fact, I should say not one, but many of them claimed their name. It happened after Jesus approached a man gone mad, whom evil spirits had chosen to dwell with them. Before Jesus performed the purging of the demons, he asked its name, and it replies, Legion, because there were many spirits inside of this individual. But from the past to the present and on into the future, Humans continue to tackle with Satan's helpers. In fact, I remember a story that one Wesleyan pastor brought to my attention years back. He told me of a face-to-face -face encounter that he had with a demon. He said that he was in Florida at the time. He was talking to a person who had dabbled with the devil through witchcraft. As he began to talk with this one, the eyes of the person rolled back in her head and she began to speak like a man. A spirit manifested itself outside of her body and told the pastor that it would not give her up. Hours later, the Lord enabled this pastor that I was talking to, and he was describing this story, he, he, he enabled the pastor to deliver the demon out of the woman. Friends, the real enemy every one of us has to deal with is evident, and it's not each other. You know, one way we can be dealing with all this conflict going on is in prayer. We can be praying that people will get it and they'll understand what's going on behind these groups working to cause division. Though uh, this real enemy each of us deals with and his followers, they're not always able to be seen with the human eye, their effects can be. Our opposition is obvious and it's not always the person next to you or across the world from you. So the best way to enter this battle is on your knees in prayer. Next, remember this, our fight is not with our kind. Our real battle is not to be against flesh and blood. 
That's what Paul is saying in our passage. Put another way, stop fighting with people as if they're your problem. Church, we know how easy it is, myself too, to get mad at people, and especially those who oppose God. I myself can relate to this. I'm like, honestly, how can there actually be people that don't believe there's a divine creator? How, I say to myself, is that even possible? Or how could anyone actually believe that God is bad when he has so much love for them? In John chapter 8, Jesus debated with the so-called religious gurus of the day. They sought to kill him, yet Jesus was the personification of all that is perfect. Still, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and I always like to say this when I say Sadducees, they're sad, you see. They, as the relig religious leaders, did not believe that Christ was good. In fact, they saw Jesus as one who was only there to make their jobs harder. Jesus tried to get his words into their minds so that they could understand, but ultimately many of them would not. Till finally the Lord said in John chapter 8, I love this, Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. Here's the point from this passage. People may pose problems in our Christian lives, but they're not to blame for it all. An unseen being and his followers work behind the scenes with craftiness and cruelty to try to coerce people to be mad at each other and God. So when you feel the fire of your anger burn hot against someone, think of the Creator God. Over and over again, He has every right to release wrath on His creation. And I, I can't stop bringing it up. I, I mean this with my heart. I can't believe He hasn't destroyed us before now because of abortion. I can't understand how with all the sin that we're endorsing in our world that he hasn't. Except to say God in his mercy wants people to come to him for forgiveness. Will you do that if you're joining us online or you're going to watch this later on? Will you ask God to forgive you of your sins? Because his mercy is so great. And if that doesn't speak of God's love, I don't know really what else better does. Because when Jesus came to earth and people spit on him, beat him, and ultimately nailed him to a cross where he died, he said, Father, forgive them. When someone wrongs you, do as Christ did. Respond with love and pray for that person or people. Because remember, our fight is not with flesh and blood. Third thing today I want to talk about, His good, the good of God, makes evil go away. Alright, it makes evil be gone. Because why? There is power in the name of Jesus. I love that song. Alright, there's this song where they keep using the one-liner. There is power in the name of Jesus. And why? To break every chain. Break every chain. So I don't know where you're at today. I don't know if you're a Christian struggling with some addiction or maybe you feel like there's no hope. You're depressed. You're overwhelmed. Maybe fear has got a hold of you to the point where you're just afraid to go anywhere, to do anything. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you there is power in the name of Jesus. And that is not just a good one-liner. It's the truth. I am reminded of that statement. When I think back to a story I once heard while as a student at Indiana Wesleyan University in Marion, Indiana. One of my friends had played for me a tape that sent shivers to my spine. It was a radio show that had been taped and this girl was on there calling because she knew a pastor was also on the radio show. And as the conversation began between the pastor and the gal, 
It didn't take long for the minister to discover that the girl was possessed by a demon. Now with my own ears, my friend played this tape, and I heard the demon take over through the girl. And she began to speak like a man. And the demon said it would not leave her. It made reference to the previous callers that had actually called in on the show, and it actually said one of them follows Satan too. But as the pastor would say the name of Jesus, eventually after saying it so many times, and in a prayer of faith, I can say for a fact to you today, that girl was delivered from that demon even while on the radio show. In another story, but this one was more personal for me, a roommate of mine while at Indiana Wesleyan University told me that he had awakened from a deep sleep one night and he could not open his mouth. He said that he had felt an evil presence which was not allowing for him to call out to me for help because I was his roommate. The spirit was keeping his mouth shut. He said that soon after he said the, in his mind the name of Jesus over and over again and believed it, he was eventually able to speak because the spirit left him. Lest we forget, we serve a Savior who has triumphed over sin. And that's not just something that happened in the Bible, but it continues to happen today. He overcame death so that you can have life. So please, don't miss out on the opportunity to know Jesus. I know I keep bringing it up, but I believe it's more important than ever. If you don't know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, you need to ask Him to forgive you of your sins. You need to invite Him into your life so that you can start a new life right now. In fact, if that's you, if you ask Him to forgive you of your sins because He who knew no sin became sin for you, let us know if you started that journey with Christ today. Email us. Call us here at the church. Look us up on our website. And let me remind you as it concerns this spiritual battle, this battle beyond the physical, that Lucifer and the lovers of his evil ways can only do what God allows. Hence, go back to the book of Job. Recall the character Job in that story. We find that Satan was allowed to bring certain things upon Job's life, and certain tragedies. He was never allowed to take his life, but he was allowed to do certain things. Yet, Job was rewarded after staying true to God. Just like you may not understand the same blessings like he was blessed materially, but you may be blessed spiritually or in another way as a result of overcoming your spiritual battles. So it is with us. Through petitions and praises to God, the devil is put down and discouraged. When the Almighty's power is present, the opportunities for amazing things to take place are plenty. Need I remind you, it was God who enabled the Red Sea to be parted. It was God who empowered Elijah to part water in a river. It was God who allowed Elisha, after praying blindness upon an enemy, to see just that. For God know this, the elimination of evil is not a problem. Let us not wonder what the Father wills for us. I like what I posted on Facebook recently, and it's so true. There may be a lot of battles going on right now which seem to be going in the way of Satan and what he wants, but remember who wins the war. Jesus Christ wins the final war. The Bible says that if we resist the devil, he will flee. Further, we read in Scripture that if God is for us, who can be against us? Friends, greater is he that is in us as Christians than he that is in the world. Now, if still you feel discouraged because demons are lingering nearby, recall that you read in the Bible to not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Church, that good is God. And we have access to Him. We have the way out, the way of escape that the Bible speaks about. But will you let Him in? Will you let Him help you win 
the victory through Christ? Because in a world where what people can see with their eyes alone is what seems to be a driving force for many of them, it's easy to forget about the unseen reality that we're involved with. The spiritual world is no less true than who you meet throughout this life. I want to remind you of that because I'll be honest, I see some people get on the news media and there are times in my life where I'm like, I am ticked at that person. I wish I could be there and just smack them once. God forgive me for that, okay? I need to remember it's Satan convincing them to do the things that they're doing. Our battle is not with flesh and bone. Thus, with God's good, the evil must go. Let's pray as once who believe that. And then I want to encourage you, if you're joining us online, sing the final song, Amazing Grace, along with us. We're going to sing it a cappella after the prayer. But I also want to ask you who are in the parking lot, you don't have to, but if you're able and you want to, would you join in a line with family six feet apart and maybe get a little bit closer to the cell phone so that they pick it up, all right, and to the camera, so that everyone can hear us joining in together how great God's amazing grace is. In fact, I'd ask you to do that now if you would. If you feel comfortable and safe to do that, let's sing Amazing Grace together after uh, the prayer. Heavenly Father, thanks again. The Lord, you are much greater than the devil. The devil's time is limited. In fact, I would say his end is not only near, but it's for sure. Thank you, Father, that we have victory through Christ Jesus and that we will win this war. But we have to remain true to you. We have to remain faithful as your followers. Father, I thank you that, God, you continue to help our ministry continue even during these hard times. Thank you, God, for the faithful giving of those. Even when things aren't going well, they're willing to give up and do what you've called them to do. Thank you, Father, that we can worship together as we do in this free nation. And Lord, I just know the answer to all the problems going on now, uh, as much as I'm thankful for certain science and certain recommendations and all these things going on, ultimately, Jesus is the answer. So I pray for our governor, DeWine. I pray for our first responders. I pray for our nation's leaders, President Trump and all of the House and uh, Senate leaders. Father, I pray for our community leaders, for Mayor Judge and others. Oh Lord, I pray that as uh, we navigate through these hard times that our teachers will be safe, that our students will be safe, and that all of our administrators will make right decisions that are wise, but only first as ones who are bathing them in prayer. Thank you, God, that we can pray to a living God. And unlike Nietzsche who said, God is dead, I know you're very much alive. So I pray that, believing that, this morning, and even though not everyone online can hear it, would we all give a shout out and say amen? Amen. 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 So we're going to sing together Amazing Grace. For those of you that are here, you should have the, uh, the papers with you of the verses that we're going to sing. For those of you online, join us together, and we'll end with that song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that set a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but
Thank you, God, for your amazing grace. Have a great day today, everybody. God bless you.